I think in a lot of in life period, we miss the God actually in life. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We miss the opportunity to be a God's grace. You know, that's what we was, God is everything, you know? <laughs> And so really, you know, with the game last night, nobody could have done what they did actually without God being in, in, in the midst. Right. That's true. But we'll, like today, like most people will be talking about how good the game was and, you know, and it was, it was a great game, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't divorce the fact that it had it not been God, for God it wouldn't happen. That is true. Yeah. And see, and, and Miss, even Mark Jackson, one of the announcers, yeah. uh -huh. like, he's an ordained minister. As a matter of fact, I, I know he was a pastor. Oh, wow. But that gets swept over the floor because most folk are afraid to talk about God in life. in life. And that's what we're doing, you know, with, with our uh, curriculum. We call it deployed. So we're actually challenging all believers um, to make God a regular part of your life. And there's nothing that you do really that you don't recognize it's because of the power of the gospel. Amen. I thought I said something. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you have to say amen every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Now, Adam, you can't be rushing. You got to be ready. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So back to that, though. Um, what we were talking about last week, we were talking about moving on purpose. Uh-huh. And I found, when I was reading this book, and I was talking about how well, actually, I was listening to this audio book about like, black wealthy people. Uh -huh. And it was saying like, how certain wealthy people, like, like the Ebony, you know, the, Ebony, the guy who made Ebony magazine. Mm -hmm. It was saying like how he prayed before he made any decision he made, you know. And I thought that was genius to hear that from because our, you know, our, our, you know, our people, you know. You don't hear too many wealthy stories like that from our people, like. Right? I thought it was excellent. And but see, that's actually biblical, Adam. Uh -huh. Because there's nothing wrong with wealth. Right. There's nothing wrong with us having it, but it's yeah. how we use it for the glory of God. Right. And it's good if we acknowledge, well, the right thing is to acknowledge that it actually came from God. Right. Because there's a scripture that says, it's God that gives us the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant. So that if we use the wealth, Actually, to um, how do I want to say this? Glorify God, magnify God, uh -huh. or help others see Him. That's the right use of wealth. So He doesn't mind us having wealth. So, as a matter of fact, He promised to give us everything we need to uh -huh. do what He tells us to do. See, Amen. <clears throat> so it's incorrect for a believer to say, I don't have, I'm obeying God, I'm doing what God tells me to do, but I don't have what it takes to do what he tells me to do. That's not God, because uh, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things he'll add to you. And so what, he really, what God is really saying if you do what I tell you to do, I'm going to provide everything you need to do it. Right. So, in other words, people got to put their energy into it too, though, right? Yeah. Like, if I wanted, if you want to be a thousandaire or a millionaire or have wealth or retirement, you have to set yourself up, put yourself in a position to put up 150 a week or however what an individual can afford to, to put up, right? Yeah, because I think it's in Proverbs. He said, "Look at the ant, you slugger. Yeah. The ant, he 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 stores up stuff because he knows winter is coming. Yeah. And the same way with with believers, 
we've got to prepare also, not only for our future, but the future of our children and our grandchildren. So we're actually responsible for three generations to actually yeah. demonstrate the power of God. Yeah. 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 And even like your shop here. Yeah. Like, God provided that. You know that, right? Yeah. 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 It's funny, sometimes when we're in the moment, we forget about that stuff. You know, that it's really a blessing because I was, I was praying about it. You know, I'm like, man, okay. And I saw it and I went for it. You know, okay, but everything fell in place. So. And see what you said it was so important. You prayed and you went for it. And see, most people say, I'm praying, and they don't do anything. And faith without works is there. You prayed, and then you went for it. Right. I prayed and I did something, and look what happened. Right. So now you got your own shop, your own business, you're able to operate in your own, and you're able now to talk about God as much as you want to. Yes, that's true. Because it's your shop. Now, and that's what kingdom work is about like taking everything and placing it under the authority of God mm. so when you start talking about the mainstream of life businesses mm -hmm. so it's, it's not wrong for people to do what they do well like you you cut hair yes sir you do it well right but now you use that now to actually glorify God right now that's the difference that's the big difference yeah so folks can come in here and while they're sitting in the chair, they have our conversation, and you're going to talk about God. That's right. And that, what we call that is planting seeds of the gospel. I think it's a, a great opportunity, too, for the next generation that's coming up for young men. Because I was once lost some things that I had. I, didn't have, I was blessed to have like uncles and aunties that uh, put the word in me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have a barber shop to go to where they can... You know, you can have a positive person influence on your kids to a certain degree. Hmm. That's, a, that's a blessing though, you know? Yeah, and I think what you said is so important. When people move around, okay, you should, so you got a positive place to come to. So you got a place that you come to. Now you hear about God, not only in the church, you hear about him in the barbershop. Imagine that impact. That's kind of, that's everywhere, right? yeah. everywhere. Yeah. and that's a, where it's supposed to be that everywhere you go somebody's talking about God imagine what kind of society we'd have and that's what we're endeavoring to do yeah. 